Good day, students. So today we are going to do microbiology. So let's, we're going to do question one to 70. So let's start with a brief lecture. So what is the first thing you need to know? Yes, welcome to the microbial world. So as you can see that viruses are non-cellular structures. What do I mean they are non-cellular structures? Viruses are not living beings. They are not living things because without a host, they cannot survive here. Yes, so that's what it is. Then cellular structures, you can see uh, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Yes, yeah? so prokaryotes lack nucleus and eukaryotes lack, um, eukaryotes have nucleus. So you can see the examples of prokaryotes. Yes, there are um, bacterials with, uh, there are bacterials, yes. And then eukaryotes are fungi and protozoa. They have a uh, nucleus. So next thing you need to know is the staining here so that we can talk about gram negative and gram positive. This is just a brief summary. Now we have the almighty gram stain that I'm sure everybody knows about. Now let me quickly differentiate gram positive and gram negative. So what are they talking about? If you look at this picture closely, you can see, can you look at this picture? You can see that a gram positive bacteria have a thick wall or mean a lot of peptido glycan layer while gram negative don't have that they only have we can see very thin just one layer and because of that this gram post this gram post because of this thick wall they can retain that uh, blue dye because gram negative bacteria don't have that multiple um peptidoglycan they cannot retain the dye the, the blue dye that is why in the gram stain of course first of all we will the first step is as you can see, um, application of, okay, summary, yes. When we put the uh, crystal violet dye or the purple dye, yes, then we put iodine. I need to know that iodine is the mordant because are now Cork will ask you what is the mordant in the gram, in gram staining is iodine. Then after we wash it with alcohol, then after that we put the next stain, which is saffron, and saffron is known as the counter stain or the red stain. Now, if it was a uh, gram-positive bacteria, because of the numerous wall, it will, it will retain this um, crystal violet dye, and it, that's why it, it will be crystal violet or purple in color. But because, as I said, gram-negative doesn't have it, they will retain, they won't retain this uh, dye, rather they will retain the last dye used, yes, when you wash it with alcohol. So, uh, gram-positive, if you wash it with alcohol, it will still retain that purple dye because it has a lot of thick layer, thick peptidoglycan, but gram negative don't have that thick layer. So when you wash it, the purple dye will, when you wash that cord, the purple dye will go away. So it's when you stain it again with saffron, that's now, that's the stain that the gram negative will have. So that's what you need to know. Then, so there are other things that once you know the stains, you know your answer in croc. So, if Croc talk about gram stain, you know these steps now. But if there are other, there are simple stains, like it's just one stain, yes? Gram stain is, uh, is, is double. So fusion, if Croc talk about fusion, it is stain, it will stain pink. If it's left fair, it will stain blue, yes? But what should you focus on now? Let's talk about the Neisseria, the complex stains. So you can see the first one is the gram stain, which we discussed about, or the double stain, just a complex stain. Then the second one is Nisser staining, and you can see it's for diphtheria. Look at the next stain, acid fast stain, also known as what? Zilnesin stain. How do I differentiate? As you can see, diphtheria has eye. Diphtheria has plenty eye, more than mycobacterium. Mycobacterium has eye, but diphtheria has two eyes, yes. So I correlate it with Nisser that has eye. Nelson. Just forget about this zeal here. Now sin doesn't have eye, so I correlate it with mycobacteria. So you know mycobacteria is tuberculosis, yes, good. Then um, let's talk about the Nisser stain, yes, the, the Nisser stain. So if you can see the, okay, the Nelson stain. The Nelson stain is for tuberculosis, please. And what's the, what is the first stain? The first stain or the primary stain is carbofushin. Then we heat it slightly on the flame, then we use alcohol, then we counter this thing with methylene blue. So the first stain is carbofushin, and the other stain is what? Methylene blue. Okay, let's go back. Then for spore stain, a tells you that 
they used an Ojenko or Kukazin stain. In strictly, your answer will be you are looking for a spore forming bacteria. Yes, then if Croc talk about Zidorovsky stain, it will be Rickettsia. If Croc talk about Burinsgin stain, it will be capsule demonstration. We want to check if there's a capsule on this bacteria. Then other special stains are Roman. Nofsky Gizman stain for Yersinia pestis and spirochet, but please focus on the Yersinia pestis. You can also use silver impregnation or the Morov, Morov Cove stain for spirochet. Okay, now what is cocci and what is bacilli? Cocci, as the name implies, they are round, bacilli or rod, they are like rod like in shape. So look at Staphylococci. It could tell you there are grape like clusters on the culture. We are talking about Staphylococci species. Yes, Streptococci, as name implies, so it's dot dot. Yes, it's, and cocci means it's circular form. So if it is a diplococci, it means it's round round and arranged in two pairs. If it's a monococci, it's round round and it's just single single. Yes, if it's a tetracoci, it means it's what? Round round and arranged in fours, like four four. Streptococci is in chains. Then, um, classic example, when Croc is talking about Diplococci species and they want you to identify the bacteria, Croc will focus on Neisseria gonorrhea and Neisseria meningitis. How do you further differentiate? If Croc talk about pus in the vagina, yes, or in the urethrogenital tract, you're thinking of Neisseria gonorrhea. But if Croc talk about nasopharyngeal swab or the cerebrospinal fluid or the brain, we're talking about Neisseria with meningitis, yes. The next thing we need to talk about is the rods. So, these are the key points you focus on, yes, if croc is rods or bacilli. So if croc tells you that you have identified a bacteria that they look like Chinese letters or Latin letters, we are going for what diphtheria automatically. If croc talk about a capsulated spore forming streptobacilli, please go for what anthrax, very important points now. If talk about a spore forming obligate anaerobe, what do they mean by obligate anaerobe? Anaerobe, that is they can only survive in an environment where there you don't have oxygen, where there is an absence of oxygen. So you talk about spore forming an obligate anaerobe, they are clostridia species, yes. And because they, most of these clostridia, like clostridia perfringes, clostridia um, difficile, that we'll do, so we'll do this in the next in the second lecture. They are, they because they are, they live in, the uh, crossidium perfringes. If we talk about gas gangrene, crossidium perfringes. That's what I wanted to say. Then the next one you need to focus on a spiral shape. Yes, please. Important point. If Croc tells you slightly curved rod is what vibro cholera, and this causes what diarrhea. Important point. What caused dysentery? Shigella. Please. What is dysentery? Blood um, bloody diarrhea. Yes or watery stool with blood that's dysentery and it's caused by shigella but diarrhea is just watery stool and it's caused by vibro cholera they have talked about a bacteria that looks like a bird wings is what helicobacteria okay helicobacteria curved rod okay curved rod or comma shape will be vibro cholera Bird wings will be helicobacteria, and helicobacteria or helicobacteria pylori is mostly, mostly causes what gastric ulcer. The next one we talk about is leptospera. So, when it, if Croc could tell you that the letters look like the when you look at it in a smear, it looks like uh, S and C is leptospera. Another thing we'll see is jaundice in leptospera in, infection. Important points. Then, okay, what else do you need to know again? So motility, yes, please. Um, to check motility, because some bacteria have a motile, like for example, vibro cholera. We're going to see a picture very soon. To check for motility, there are two tests: croc and put dark field microscopy or face contrast microscopy. Yes. So croc will not put both for you. So if croc is telling you, if croc tells you that this person has diarrhea. Yes, and we want to determine the motility. So we already we have linked diarrhea to vibro cholera. I know that vibro cholera is a um, motile. They have flagella, just one flagella. So to ask you what test should you check for the motility? It's that dark field of face contracts. Then spores with what ojenko spores has O, ojenko or gazin stain. Yes. Now, if they are, if cocktails, uh, this you, in this bacteria, you have central spores, 
anthrax. If crop tells you that they uh, this bacteria look like uh, like they have terminal spores, it will be uh, Clostridium tetani. Yes, please. What what are spores? What is spores? So um, in unfavorable condition, most bacteria will die, but resistant bacteria like um, or spore forming bacteria, they are resistant, meaning when they are in unfavorable condition, they would form a spore. So these spores are very resistant and they can survive for years in the soil. When there is a favorable condition, they will germinate or they will vegetate to the talk to the infectious um, state and cause a lot of damage. So this you need to this you need to know the spore for me. All of them, as you can see, there are four. Yes. Beta um, Bacillus anthrax, Clostridia tetani, Clostridia botulinum, Clostridia perfringis. Clostridia perfringis is what gas gangrene is. Now, if crop talk about uh, Clostridia tetani, they'll either tell you it has a terminal spore or they'll talk about tetanus. Yes, lockjaw, trismus, you, you know what tetanus is. Yes, good. Then Clostridia botulism, they'll talk about it like a tennis racket. Yes, subterminal spores, so on and so forth. Capsule, yes, we just need to know the stain for capsule, which is burin skin stain. Croc, I'm not, Croc will not go in detail about it. So let's look here. Let's let's revise. As you can see, this is what a vibro cholera. I can see it's comma shape or curved shape rod. We're going to see how to do. Then in helicobacteria, let me differentiate H. pylori. How do you differentiate helicobacter purely? What do you notice? Can you see that it, both of them have terminal flagella? But of uh, Helicobacteria has more. There's how to name bacteria according to the amount of flagella they have. Please, someone should remind me at the end of the class so that I'll look for the names and show you. Okay, so we want to grow bacteria. So we have different mediums: enrichment medium, supportive media, selective medium, and differential medium. How do we differentiate? Yes. So enrichment media, we use this when it contains specific nutrients required for the growth of a particular pathogen. Yes, so we want to grow a particular pathogen, and we know this particular um, pathogen or bacteria need this specific nutrient to be able to grow. Yes, because to grow bacteria, they need food to be able to grow. Yes, so if we want to grow a part, if we want to grow a particular pathogen, and we we are using a specific nutrient media, it's known as an enrichment media. And look at the example: blood and chocolate. Once you know the example, you know that what enrichment media is. Yes? Then the next one we need to talk about is supportive media. Supportive media is mostly used in to provide support. So there are something known as fastidious organism, meaning that this organism can only grow. They can only grow. Um, they mostly grow alone. Let's put it like they are very selective. So we need to give a supportive media to so, like to support to pamper them to care for them something like that. Crop will not question your supportive media. Yes, let's focus on the next one. Crop will focus on selective media. It is used when we want to. Okay, for example, we know that in this swab there could be multiple bacteria. Yes, we know for our intestine we have a lot of bacteria in our intestine, but we want to iso but we want to isolate one of these bacteria that we want to um, look at. So we need to remove those other bacteria. Yes, so we use a selective media so that it can inhibit the other organisms and we can use we can only grow that particular one we want yes then the next one will be this work will focus on differential media now differential media is used to differentiate bacterial species um, of the same colony for example we have um for example we have uh, staphylococci yes we want to not differentiate staphylococci or re staphylococci that or we have uh, maybe like for example clostridium perfringis clostridium Botulism, can you see that they're in the same group but different subtypes? So that's what we use for differential medium form. Just know their examples. Makoki ega. We also have endos ega. AOC methylene blue ega. Yes. Okay. Now, why am I talking about it? Very important. Look here. Now, endos agar, what is the function of endos agar? Endos agar, we mostly use this when we want to check the ability of a bacteria to ferment what? Lactose. Ferment lactose. If they ferment lactose, they will give a pink color, yes? And if they don't, let's look at it first of all. They said, um, let's look at the results, yes? Yes. Lactose positive colonies exhibit a red color, yes? Sometimes they can produce a metallic sheen. Yes, but non-lactose 
fermenting bacteria will produce a colorless uh, colony. So as you can see, that metallic sheen or pink, yes. And then look at here, they are colorless. As you can see, it looks like white line. What you need to know, this is very important. Please, you need to know the type of bacteria and the um, whether they are lactose fermenting or not. Just take a screenshot of this table. You can see them. E. coli, they are what pink to rose red with metallic sheen. So they lack they ferment lactose effective effectively. But if you notice when we when we start from Samolena and Shigella, can we see that they are what colorless, colorless, except Enterobacter, which has what only a green metallic sheen. You see that it's not pink. But Samolena to Shigella, colorless colony. So if Croc tells you Endos, Ega, and Pink Colony, E. coli, Klebsiella, so on and so forth, yes. As then sometimes, Croc will not really, if Croc talk about Samolena, they will not tell you, you can look at Samolena typhi, it can be colorless to pale pink. So Croc, if Croc just tells Samolena, just go for colorless, okay, Croc will not really go so deep. Okay, let's continue. So as you can see, the uh, differential medium, yes, Endos, Ega, that's what you need to focus on for croc. Differential, yes, to differentiate. Then selective, we have yolk salt agar. If croc is going to talk about yolk salt agar, it means that croc wants you to identify a lecithin. A, a, this, if a bacteria has lecithinase, so lecithinase ferment lecithin. That's what you need to know. So if croc talk about lecithin fermenting um, bacteria, yolk salt agar, you put it on. Blood teriolet agar, please, is for C. diphtheria. Once you know it, you know the bacteria you're looking for, yes, C. diphtheria. Bordens gendau agar is for Bortella pertussis. Lofius medium is for what? Also, you can see it can also grow C. diphtheria. So just know their different mediums, yes. Can you see that? Kit tyrosis medium is for mostly what? Anaerobic bacteria. And please focus on these two. Sabward agar is for fungal infections, especially what? Candida. Okay. You can see alkaline peptone broth or agar is for vibro cholera. Another one they didn't mention here is glucose peptone agar. Yes, I think glucose peptone agar is for staphylococci too. Please know that. Okay. Then the next thing we need to talk about is immunity. Okay, before we do immunity, let's quickly go back here. Yeah. So another thing we need to talk about is coli index and coli titer. So let's start from coli index. Coli index is the amount of E. coli that is in that is present in one liter of of fluid or one kg or one thousand milliliters. Yes, one thousand milliliters is one liter. So that's coli index. Why coli titer is the minimum amount of E. coli. You know, it's the minimum amount of a sample that you that you can find one E. coli. Again, coli index is the amount of bacteria, yes, that you can, so you have one liter or one kg. So how many bacteria, how many E. coli do you have here? That's coli index. Then coli titer is, you have taken an amount, yes, it's not specific, you have taken an amount of a sample. Now you are asking yourself, or you're asking yourself, let me, let me rearrange it again. You have, in coli index, you must have, you know, one liter or one kg. And then you ask yourself, how many E. coli is here? But in coli titer, you ask yourself, what is the minimum amount of a sample that will contain just one E. coli? So you just want one. So what is the, what, how, how much sample do we need to take to just get one? Okay, so you don't need to know the definition. Why am I telling you this? Because it's very important when we come to water. Now, if Croc tells you that the Coli index is up to three, okay, or let's say it should not pass three. So when it's, um, let's say, zero to three, that water is safe for drinking. But if it is greater than three, it is bad for drinking. If you can see, too, if the Coli titer is greater than 300, it's bad for drinking. So if it's less than 300, it's good for what? Drinking. Okay, what else should we talk about? Life vaccine. So what is life vaccine and, and killed vaccines? Life vaccines are also known as weak vaccines or attenuated vaccines. They are alive, but they are just weak. Yes, they are not as effect. They are not like the virus itself. Yes, okay, we are now in virus. Now, killed vaccines means this uh, uh, antigen or whatever it is, is dead. 
So because of that, the live vaccines are more, they produce more strong immune response, yes, while the kid vaccines is poor. So that is why um, in vaccines that are killed vaccines, you mostly require booster shots. But vaccines that are not live vaccines, you, you can you can only, you only take it once. Yes, we'll see the examples very soon. Okay. Why am I telling you about vaccines? Because you can see the different types of vaccines. Very important. Take a screenshot. Focus on these live vaccines are what smallpox, uh, chicken pox. So you can see that we only take chicken pox vaccine uh, once, and then it's very effective. Yes. Then or another just take life. Just forget about this. The way that they differentiate, you just know that under life we have smallpox, chickenpox, tuberculosis, focus on measles, mops, and rubella. It's known as what MMR vaccine is given together. MMR. Then when we're talking about then BCG is tuberculosis vaccine, then plague vaccine, yes, yellow fever vaccine. Very important. Everyone has taken these two. The next one we need to focus on is the cute vaccines. And the cute vaccines are weakened, yes. For example, cholera, typhoid, pertussis. Oh, let's focus on this. Uh, focus on this very important: the SARC polio and the. Why am I talking about SARC polio? Because in polio we have two types of vaccine. Yes, we have the oral polio vaccine and the also known as Sabine polio vaccine, and we have the and this or the SARC polio vaccine. I will explain this in the next lecture. Don't worry. Then toxoids. Um, I told you that some bacteria they some bacteria or some viruses, they can produce toxins, and this is more deadly than the bacteria or virus itself. So we need to neutralize these toxins here. Yeah? So we, they are known as toxoid. So in a vaccine form, we have diphtheria, pertussis. We have DPT, diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus. So that's why I did mention, I, I, in toxoid, I want you to think diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis. Pertussis is not, just remove pertussis from, from the killed vaccines. You mostly give pertussis as a, Toxoid vaccine. Then for hepatitis, I want you to know that hepatitis is a recombinant vaccine. That's all you need to know. Okay, then cellular fraction vaccines means these vaccines take only a very minute fragment of this virus and we give it for immunity, yes. Uh, the reason why sometimes we use cellular fraction vaccines is to prevent like allergy, yes, so that the body does not, um, there's no like allergy response. Okay, this is what I like to use. I like to use this picture very well. So let's start with active and passive, first of all. Active means that this the body made the antibody. And passive immunity means that the, uh, the antibody was given to the person. So I think everybody knows what antibody is here. Yeah, it's good. Now, when it's a natural active immunity, it means that the body made the antibody, but it was due to an infection that this person got, so it's natural. When it's an active artificial, it means that this person made the antibody, but it wasn't due to an infection. It was due to what a vaccine, because the vaccine doesn't it doesn't really make you to fall sick. Yes, so you get it. Passive immunity means that this person got the antibody, so the person did not make the antibody. Let's talk about natural. Natural is from the mother. Yes, it's from the mother to the child through breast milk. So the mother has made this antibody, yes, and it's natural, yes, because the mother is it's a natural process. The mother will give this antibody to the baby. So the baby didn't make the antibody, but it's gotten it from a natural source. The artificial passive is when we just give serum or immunoglobulins to a patient. For example, I don't know if everyone saw this. Uh, it was a time in COVID when they were asking people for their plasma. Yes, people who have developed immunity before. You're asking people for their plasma. Or sometimes we can make synthetic antibodies. Yes, let's focus on the synthetic part. So we give these people these antibodies. Yes, they are not the one making it. And then because we made it ourselves, man made this artificial. Okay, now that you know that, as you can see, you can take a photo. This is very important. You can see monoclonal antibodies. Good. So let's start with the MCQ. So rather often, the cause of acquired immunodeficiency is the infectious damage of organism, which is characterized by the causative agent reproductive reproduction directly in the immune cells and destruction of these cells. Choose the disease that causes. So now they want to confuse you, but what should you focus on? Rather often, the cause of acquired immunodeficiency, I think in part of physiology, we talked about 
the um, acquired, also known as secondary immunodeficiency and primary immunodeficiency. Yes, I think that secondary or acquired immunodeficiency is due to another. The reason why you have a deficient immunity is due to either is due to another cause, such as uh, drugs like glucocorticoids, yes, because they suppress immunity, or due to infections like AIDS. Yes, so already they told you that the cause of acquired immunodeficiency is an infectious damage of the organism. Of course, we should be thinking of what AIDS. Gram negative comma shaped bacteria are revealed in the feces of a patient with diarrhea. You are right, diarrhea and what? comma shaped, you're thinking of what vibro cholera. They're asking you what should you study first for you to confirm or give you additional information, yes, so that you, you can nod your head and tell this, um, uh, your teacher or your professor that I'm, I'm, this, I'm confirming my diagnosis of vibro cholera. The next thing you need to check is what? The presence of motility. Yes, because if it's motile, we know that definitely this is a fibro cholera, yes. Yeah? So why not volunteering inclusion? Volunteering inclusions are for diphtheria species, over for diphtheria species, yes. Yeah? So we know what Croc will ask you when they're talking about spores or caps, we'll get to it. So that's why the answer is C. During a sanitary bacteriological investigation, the Coli index is what? It's three. How do you evaluate the results? You are right. The water is eligible for drinking because it's, it's not greater than what? Three. Okay. Number four, sanitary bacteriological investigation by so on and so forth. They, are, they told you that it revealed two red colonies on a membranous filter or on endos medium uh, in what, 500 milliliters. What is the Coli index and Coli titer? So let's have the Coli index first. Coli index is the amount of E. coli in what? How do I even know it's E. coli? Because I can see red colonies already. Yeah. It's the amount of E. coli in one liters, also known as what, 1,000 milliliters. So if there is two colonies in 500 milliliters, it means that there are four colonies in what? In 1,000 milliliters, because you need Coli index is how many E. coli you have in 1,000 milliliters or one, or one liter, yes? So if Croc tells you there are two colonies in 500 milliliters, 500, it means that you have four colonies in 1,000 milliliters. Yes, yeah, so that's why the answer is four. What is Coli titer? Another formula you can use to, to calculate Coli titer is this. As you can see that Coli titer is what? 1,000 divided by your Coli index. So automatically, we already know what our Coli index is, is four. So 1,000 divided by four is what? 250, good. I'll do number five very soon. Let's move to number six. Prophylactic vaccination of a student group was necessary because of diphtheria. What preparation should you use to develop artificial active immunity? So the first thing we need to ask ourselves is that this is what active. So the person is making the words, the, the antibody themselves, yes, and it's artificial. What's an artificial active immunity? It's not natural, yes. Natural is due to an infection. So artificial will be due to a vaccine, yes. So we should be thinking of something with a vaccine. So automatically we should rule out what the serum, specific immunoglobulin. Yes, we should rule out what B and C. Now we don't have an inactivated vaccine for diphtheria. Okay, so inactivated vaccines are killed vaccines. Then life vaccines are weak or attenuated. So we can see under our, our killed or inactivated vaccine, oh, it's even written here. Do we see anything of diphtheria? No, so they also let's confuse you. So we have eliminated B, C, E. Now, why don't we give, why are we giving the diphtheria toxoid rather than the vaccine DBT? Because what did they write? Prophylactic vaccination of a student group because of a case of diphtheria. So there's already a case of diphtheria. What did I tell you is very important in diphtheria infection? The toxin, that's what kills the person first before the bacteria itself. So we need to neutralize this toxin first. That's why it's a prophylactic. We are preventing the death of this patient. So that's why we're going to give the toxoid first not the DPT, DPT. The DPT is given mostly in um, in children, yes, when they are, I don't know the required age right now, but you know when a child is born, they will have vaccination like plan. That's when we give DPT. And think about it. Um, another thing I forgot to mention here is that when you give a vaccine, yes, a vaccine, 
it takes time for your body to develop an immune response. Yes, your body needs three to four weeks to develop a proper immune response. So imagine if there's a case of diphtheria and you're giving DPT, before the body will develop that immune response, the patient is dead. Yes, so you need to neutralize the toxin first. So that's why we're giving a diphtheria toxoid. And DBT is only given in like during the normal vaccination routine of a child. So that's why it's not D. That's why we're giving A. Immunofluorence reaction is widely used for the express diagnostic of many bacteria and viral infections. Choose the type of microscopy, microscope that is needed for this. Now, um, in the next part of the lecture, if you notice that I, set, I sent some questions to the group here. If you notice here, I sent some questions to the group these questions. Now, um, they are, they're going to talk about agglutination, precipitation, and trust me, this is a very easy topic, and I know it's a conversation for a lot of people, so we're going to do it in the next class, so that, because we are, I've already said a lot of information, and I want everybody's um, head to be fresh when I start the agglutination process. So, anyways, but I'll tell you why this answer. If you see Croc telling you that you need to um, do a test that is fast, quick, or express, diagnostic, you need to do a what? An immunofluorence uh, test automatically. So of course, if you're doing an immunofluorence test, you need a fluorescent microscopy to check it. But if Croc tells you that you need to, how do they put that? How do they put that? Um, if Croc tells you that you need to, to, okay, we'll do that in the next part, don't worry. But if Croc tells you you need a fast test, your answer would be, quick test or something that will increase your information about it, it would be immunofluorescence test. So see. 